Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land, and they passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples, and let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me.
soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Stephanie, and um, I came to uh, uh, worship together at the CCIC San Jose retreat this past October, and it was such a blessing. And it's so great to be able to worship with you all again, um, and seeing a lot of new faces as part of this local body of, of, of Christ. Um, we're going to sing this next song called God With Us, and I'm always reminded uh, when the angels come and they call him, uh, they tell Mary, a, a son will be born to you and he will be called Emmanuel. Um, that brings me great comfort, the knowing that Emmanuel means God with us. So let's sing the song together. Sing, you 
are matchless in grace and mercy. You are matchless in grace and mercy. There is no
Heavenly Father, we we recognize that you are God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, the one who made a way for us to be saved. Father, we thank you that during this Christmas season, we are once again reminded the miracle of the incarnation of your son, Jesus, and how you came to us. And Father, we're mindful that the psalmist once said, who are we that you are mindful of us, that you care about us? But Father, yet in your love and kindness, you offer us relationship with you. Yet at times, Father, we choose to turn away from you, disobey you, perhaps even run away from you. And for that, we want to say we're sorry this morning. We're sorry for the things that have, we have done that have hurt ourselves, hurt you, and hurt our neighbors. We're sorry for the things that we have left undone, things you have called us to do. And we're sorry for the ways our hearts still long to compare ourselves with others, to covet what we do not have, and to treasure in our hearts worldly things. And we're sorry that at times we are not yet fully the body of Christ that you have called us to be. So we ask for your forgiveness for our hearts, for our attitudes, and for our actions. Let's observe a, a moment of silence as we confess our sins to God. Father, we gladly receive this forgiveness that you have freely offered to those who surrender to Christ. Jesus, you are a great high priest, and it's because of who you are and what you have done on the cross, we can then draw to your throne of grace with confidence to receive mercy and find grace. And Father, we thank you in 1 John 1, 9, you said, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Father, we give you thanks for the free forgiveness that you have offered to us in Christ. This morning, Father, we want to turn and look back and to thank you for all that you have given us this past year. In the middle of an ongoing pandemic, you have not left us like this song we just sung. You are still with us. When we couldn't meet in person for over a year, you made a way for us to meet together once again, to enjoy the blessings of worshiping and listening and praying and laughing and sharing meals together once again. And this season of the pandemic felt like a lot of waiting for most of us waiting on news and updates that may change the way that we live our daily lives. Or the way that our children, our parents, our friends and coworkers may experience daily life. But Father, once again, we are thankful that while we are waiting, while we might feel helpless at times or lack of control, that you are always with us. And thank you, God, that you are the God who works for those who wait for him. So, Father, we thank you once again for this privilege to come into your presence to worship you. And, Father, we pray that as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table this morning, we pray that your great love will be present with us. We pray that we will be reminded of that great love that's definitely uh, read of in the Scripture that nothing in all of creation will be separated, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ, Jesus our Lord. And so, Father, we, th we give you thanks for this morning. Uh, may our hearts and our minds and our bodies continue to be in a spirit of worship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated.
Good morning, and uh, it's great to be here together in God's presence uh, in this sanctuary or for those at home. Um, as we come to, uh, together on this Christmas Sunday, um, we recall that uh, Jesus uh, earnestly looked forward to having a meal, the Last Supper, uh, with his disciple. Even though he knew that he's going to die on the cross and suffer, but he knew that um, by dying on the cross and sacrificing himself, he's able to reconcile us to God and offer us the way uh, to be in the presence of God. And that's why today, uh, all of us are so privileged um, to be in God's presence uh, at this moment. And um, the Last Supper, um, as we conduct it, is, um, is not only to remember Jesus for what he's done, but also to look forward, uh, because this is a foretaste of the great banquet, uh, as uh, described in Revelation. So I think uh, we need to prepare ourselves on how we approach the Last Supper. So how should we do that? The first thing is to look back in gratitude to what Jesus has done on the cross for us um, so that uh, he provide the way for us to come into the presence of God. Um, the second is to look up to heaven uh, because Jesus is now our great high priest advocating for his followers in front of God. <coughs> the third thing is to look around no, just look around. No, we are all followers of Christ. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And it is significant that we get together um, once a month to share this meal because by taking the bread together, um, we are united uh, in the body of Christ. And finally, you know, despite whatever challenges and anxiety and fear you might have today, uh, we have the hope to look forward to the return of Jesus Christ as our King. So let us take a, a minute um, to, to just uh, prepare our heart uh, to come before the Lord in the Lord's Supper. I'm going to read from uh, Luke uh, chapter 22, uh, verse 19 and 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So I invite all of you at home uh, to celebrate this uh, um, communion with us. And for those who have been baptized um, and accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior, um, maybe you can uh, start to come forward um, in two and maybe even three rows and, and get the element. Uh, if you haven't accepted Christ yet and haven't been baptized, uh, we, we, we look forward to a time that maybe you come to that position to accept Jesus as the great gift, as the, your Savior, and also to be baptized. Um, so may I ask the, um, everyone uh, to just form a line and come and get the element. And once we've got all the elements, then we can take the elements together.
Uh, let's rise and uh, take the elements together. Please take a seat after you after you finish. Well, it's great, great to be uh, with you all uh, this morning on a Christmas sun, uh, Sunday, and uh, it's great for Stephanie, uh, uh, Jocelyn, and Denzel to lead us in prayer uh, in the presence of our God, and. Uh, yeah, why don't you uh, rise and just uh, wish you know, so the people next to you uh, a, a merry uh, Christmas Sunday and a blessed Christmas Sunday. Yeah, and um, I think we can put put the slide up uh, if I can uh, locate the cl uh, clicker. Is it over there? <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you. Okay, before I start the message, uh, I'd like to tell a story. And uh, before I tell the story, maybe I just quick uh, do do a quick poll. Uh, how many of you have played soccer or watched soccer before? Please put up your hand. Okay, keep your hands up. And how many of you have been to United Kingdom, to England or Scotland? Put your hand up. Uh, okay, okay, it's a, a good number. So you may appreciate this, uh, this story that I'm going to tell you. Um, a, a, so a soccer referee died and showed up at the gate of heaven. And the angel greeted him and he said, Before I let you in, uh, let me just. Uh, uh, an angel, angel at the gate uh, greeted him and said, Before I let you in, can you name an act of courage that you perform while on earth? Now, knowing his theology, um, the, the, the referee said, Why? I thought salvation is by faith. The angel replied, We need the information to determine where to put you in heaven. Can you name an act of courage? Yes, the referee said, one immediately come to mind. Well, I was the referee in this hotly contested uh, international, international soccer match between England and Scotland at uh, Hampden Stadium. And there were 100,000 frantic Scottish fans and a few English visitors. In the first half, the Scottish players attacked the English goal fiercely and continuously, but they cannot score. One minute before halftime, the Scottish right winger scored, but unfortunately he was offside, so naturally I disallowed the goal. Um, but the crowd erupted with anger, and uh, there was intense booing for me. In the second half, the Scottish player resumed their intense attack on English goal. They hit the goal post once, twice, they hit the crossbar, but they could not score. And then one minute from regular time, the English striker broke away and was brought down in the penalty box. And of course, I have no hesitation but to award the penalty. And the English scored and won the game. So the angel was impressed. He said, that is an amazing act of courage. Um, but let me verify it. So he took us his H pad or heavenly tablet, <laughs> tapped in Act of Courage, and sent an inquiry into the secure, trusted Gabriel messenger. And it went into the promised land and into the celestial cloud. 
And a few seconds later, the reply came back in a text, act of courage, not found. And so the angel was puzzled. And he looked at the referee and said, this act of courage, when exactly did it happen? And the referee, and the referee replied, about 10 seconds before I met you. <laughs> Our message today, um, let me see. Be strong and courageous from uh, Joshua chapter 1. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful um, Christmas celebration uh, you know, because we know the reason why we're celebrating with your family and friends. Um, in the run up to Christmas, we look into God's promises in the book of Isaiah. Uh, last week, Pastor Ron um, spoke from Isaiah chapter 11. He mentioned that we are made for another world that is ruled by a qualified king, the Prince of Peace, who is able to reconcile us to God. And the previous Sunday, Pastor Bruce um, preached from Isaiah 7, that God reached down to the people who are living in fear and promised them a miraculous sign, Emmanuel, God with us, a son through a virgin birth. And God did this to show that he is present, present with us, and that he is powerful. And finally, on the first Sunday of this month, Elder Jimmy taught from Isaiah chapter 8 about the coming of Jesus as a light in the darkness and the anchor of our peace and our hope. In one of his applications, you might remember, Elder Jimmy asked, do you focus on your circumstances and trouble? Or do you find hope in God's promises? And this is very relevant to our message today as we look at Joshua chapter 1. Now this passage, as you all know, I think Stephanie inferred that, um, have some of the most empowering um, verses in the Bible about being strong and courageous. And for us to really appreciate and understand what those verses mean, uh, we need to look at the passage. Um, I have highlighted um, the the words of God's command uh, in red and his promises in, in yellow. Um, so maybe we can read uh, this passage uh, together, um, you, know, you at home and everyone here. Okay, uh, let's, let's do that. Mm. Um, it seems to be, can we advance the slide once? Um, okay. All right, uh, let's, let's read together. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go to the north, and you will repeat, into the land I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause these people to inherit the land that I swore to the Father. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn to the right or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord God, wherever you go. 
Very good. Now, what is what are God's command uh, to Joshua? Well, God gave Joshua three commands. Number one, arise and cross over the Jordan with all these people. Verse two. Number two, be strong and courageous. Verses six, seven, and nine. And number three, be careful to act according to the law. Do not deviate from them. Verses seven and eight. Now, God, as you read, right, did not just give the commands. He followed each command with promises to Joshua specifically and also to the people. So what are the promises? Well, God, obviously, number one is the promised land in verse 2 to 5. Secondly, God said, no one will be able to resist Joshua. God will be with him. Third, God said to Joshua, you will lead the people to inherit the land promised to their fathers. And fourthly, God promised that Joshua's way will be prosperous and we, he will have good success. So no, God not only gave the commands, but he followed it uh, with promises. Now let's read the rest of the passage to see what happened next. Uh, let's read it together. And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your provision. For within three days, you are to pass over this Jordan to take the possession of the land that the Lord your God is given to you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, remember the word that Moses, the servant of God, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give this land. Your wives, your little one, and your livestock shall remain in the land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. All the men of your valor among you shall pass over arm before your brothers and shall help them. Until the Lord give rest to your brothers as he has to you, and they also take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them, then shall you return to the land of your possession and shall possess it, the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond Jordan and towards the sunrise. And he answered Joshua, All that you have commanded us we will do, and wherever you send us we will go. Just as we obey Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you, as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobey your word, whatever you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Very good. So the question then is, um, it is what benefit it is uh, for us to look at uh, how Joshua uh, and uh, people responded. So Joshua responded by commanding the leaders and the people to prepare to cross the river Jordan within three days, uh, verses 10 and 11. And then he commanded uh, the, ma the, the men of the, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the tribe of Manasseh to go and continue with their brothers on the journey to help them fight and possess the land, verses 12 and 15. So how did the people respond? They said that we will do what you say and go where you send us. And they make a commitment and said, whoever rebels and disobey will be put to death, verse 18. I think we can say that their commitment was deadly serious. <laughs> now, having read the passage together, um, I think I can summarize uh, the passage uh, in the following way. To be strong and courageous, Joshua needed to obey God and lead the people to trust God's promises and to act together on his command. To be strong and courageous, Joshua needed to obey God to lead the people to trust God's promises 
and to act together on his command. Now, if I were a, um, a worship songwriter, I'll probably repeat that two or three more times. <laughs> but I'm not, so I'll move on. So what are the lessons that we can learn from Joshua chapter 11 that is significant, relevant, and useful to us today? Well, we know that in uh, Joshua chapter 3, um, the God miraculously parted the river Jordan and provided the people with a way to cross to the land of milk and honey. And the people were ready to transition from the wilderness to take possession of the promised land because of the following reasons. They trusted God's promise on giving them the land and that he will be with them. They acted in obedience even though the land has strong enemies and large fortified cities like Jericho, just as before. They were successful. God stated the condition for their way to success, and that is to meditate on his law and to act according uh, to the, his teaching. And finally, they were in it together. All the people fought together to take possession of the land. So what is the difference, right? In order to understand the significance of Joshua chapter 1, we have to look back 40 years ago uh, into Numbers chapter 13 and 14. Yeah, we all know that Moses sent 10 spy, spies to search out the promised land. And 10 of them came back and said, uh, no, they, they, re they reported with fear for the enemy. And they said, we seem like grasshoppers to ourselves. And it looks like we are grasshoppers to our enemies. Only Joshua and Caleb said, if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. But the people rebel against Moses and Aaron, and they said, let us choose the leader and go back to Egypt. And we know the consequence of that. It was another 40 years before they have another opportunity to enter the promised land. So what is the difference between Joshua chapter 1 and 40 years ago um, in Numbers um, chapter 13 and 14? Well, back then there were fear, right? And, and in, in Joshua chapter 1, God said, be strong and courageous. You, know, you read it three times. And this was repeated by the people once at the end. Be strong, only be strong and courageous. There was a lack of faith of what God promised and what is able, God is able to do, right? Versus trust in God in Joshua chapter 1. And there was rebellion, right? Uh, let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt versus obedience. There was a lack of commitment versus what the people say in Joshua chapter 1. All you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Total commitment. And the difference was death in the wilderness compared to life in the promised land as the people go into the promised land. Now let, let's look at transition. Transition requires strength and courage and commitment. Joshua was able to be strong and courageous in this important transition from the wilderness to the promised land because he trusted God and he obeyed God and he led the people to remember God's promises and act together in his command. Now many of us is going through transition now or will be in a few months or a few years, right? Some of you are transitioning from middle to high school. Uh, some of you are transitioning to high school, um, into college, or maybe even out there looking at colleges, right? In a, another city, or maybe even another state. And some of you will be transitioning from singles to married couples, and maybe from married couples to families with kids. And some of you may be transitioning from employment to retirement, 
or you might be already in retirement and wondering how you can be productive uh, in your golden years. Um, and this also applies to transitioning from working from home to working in the office or transitioning from uh, online to worshiping in person and fellowship in person. Um, and in this situation, um, I, I remember Pastor Bruce said uh, in his Advent message, fear is part of the human condition. Um, but God said, be strong and courageous because I am with you. So look at, let's look at the how can we be strong and courageous application. The first thing is to remember God's word through study and meditation and applying it in our life. The second thing is to trust in God's promises and the assurance that he with, he's with you. He's with you here, right? Um, God said in Isaiah chapter 41, verse uh, 10, fear not for I am with you. And in Hebrew chapter 14, for, uh, verses 15 to 16, we learn that Jesus is our high priest in heaven advocating for his followers in front of God. And in John chapter 14, verses 16 to 17, Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to be with you forever. The third thing is obedience, uh, as we learn from uh, this chapter. God has given us specific goals and instruction uh, in every transition, in every stages of our life. The transition from the wilderness um, is a journey to the promised land. And Joshua obeyed God's command to, to be successful. In our time, you know, we obey Jesus' instruction at each stage of our life because he is our Lord. All the transition I've mentioned, you know, from middle school to high school, college, um, employment to retirement, they are separate journey in an ultimate journey for the Christian where we go to the promised land, the ultimate promised land where Jesus is king. And we are to be obedient in God's purposes for each stage of our life. I remember I uh, retired from the high-tech industry uh, after over 30 years at the end of 2019. And I look forward to a sabbatical year away from the church where I can learn new things. Not that I don't learn new things in the church, but I learn new things, see new places, meet new people, try new food, and spend more time uh, with my families overseas. And I transitioned straight into the isolation of the pandemic wilderness. <laughs> Yesterday, we celebrated Christmas after over 600 days in the wilderness, a kind of a wilderness. For Moses and Joshua and the people, the wilderness is a place of wandering, a desert, for people searching for the promised land. Wilderness is also a barren place, a place without water. In the New Testament, the Greek word most translated to wilderness is an isolated place. Jesus, as you know, was in the wilderness for 40 days and went through physical challenges before he was tested by the devil, before he started his ministry. And like Joshua, to live the wilderness and accomplish the purposes that God has given you, Christians are to be strong and courageous. And this is as much a spiritual struggle as well as a physical one. And one final important lesson from Joshua chapter 1 that I want to highlight is that all the people, including the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They worked together to come out of the wilderness to take possession of God's promises. Similarly, as a church, as we go forward, we are, in, we are all in this together, but in the presence of a powerful God. So as we move forward as a church, remember, we are all in this together, in the presence of a powerful God, the Lord who make the way, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, and the light in the darkness. 
So be strong and courageous as we move into 2022. We're in it all together. So in a moment, I'm going to ask the worship team to come forward with a response song. And as we worship in God's presence, I'd like to ask you to stand up and choose this day to be strong and courageous as we transition into 2022.